On this flag day, it's time for Americans to decide which side they're on, sedition or democracy. The breakdown starts now. Hello and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson and we are with you tonight to talk all things January 6th because that is what's going on right now and uh, we're here for it. Rick, we, we've had some pretty informative um, hearings so far. Uh, we've been talking about this since last week when they first debuted in prime time, which was, uh, I thought, it, it was better than what I expected. We had another hearing yesterday yep. at where some interesting tidbits came out of that, uh, which we're going to talk about tonight. But we're also, before we get into all of that, some breaking news today. Uh, right before we came on the show, we saw that Liz Cheney put out a video previewing what's coming up for Thursday's hearing now. And um, it's, a, it's pretty interesting, a little salty language with some of the folks there, but they're going to be focusing on that John Eastman and the coup memo. But let's take a look at oh, what, uh, what Liz Cheney had to say today. It was the day after uh, Eastman, I don't remember why he called me He's in a, or he texted me or called me, wanted to talk with me, and he said he couldn't reach others. And he started to ask me about something dealing with Georgia and preserving something potentially for appeal. Uh, and I said to him, are you out of your effing mind? Right? I said, I said, I only want to hear two words coming out of your mouth for now on. Orderly transition. And then he screamed and said, I don't want to hear any other effing words coming out of your mouth, no matter what other than orderly transition, repeat those words to me. And I screamed that he Eventually he said, orderly transition. I said, good, John. Now I'm going to give you the best free legal advice you're ever getting in your life. Get a great effing criminal defense lawyer. You're going to need it. And then I hung up on him. So that was Eric Hirschman, <laughs> who is who testified. He was one of the uh, lawyers, counselors to... Uh, President Trump at the time, who clearly understood the craziness that was going on there and warned John Eastman. And Liz Cheney um, pre prefaced that uh, video and released it uh, from the January 6th committee earlier today. And um, yeah, get a fucking great criminal defense attorney, buddy, because you're going to, you know, because you're going to, you know, you're going to need it. But I, I will say this I will say this the testimony we saw yesterday. You know, we're, we're continuing that that set the predicate for what we'll have in the next hearing, which is this examination of what was this legal strategy that they thought they were going to pursue mm -hmm. that was going to, to to restore Trump to the presidency. And we're going to learn, I'm very certain that this this strategy, and I'm going to put that in air quotes, um, was legally deficient, criminally adjacent and utterly incompetent and yep. and. I think the most valuable thing out of yesterday was the education uh, on the part of the committee that what Trump did during the period from the loss of the election, um, which, by the way, the uh, red mirage story, hmm. who was telling everybody before election night 2020, don't worry, it's going to look shitty on election day. Don't worry when the absentee and early voting counts are completed, it's going to be fine. Oh, that yep. was me. That was us. Yes, I, did. And everyone, election night was in a panic. I saved a bunch of tweets from various Republican uh, activists and hacks and reporters <laughs> and conservative reporters. Who, on election night, we're like, how you doing, Rick Wilson? Ha, ha, ha. I was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, just watch wait. Me. That's watch right. Me, watch me levitate, bitches. That's right. Um, just, just wait as the as the votes come in and get counted from yeah. uh, early voting and absentee votes, all of those things that your guy told people not to do and that it was a sham and all yep. of that, and and dissuaded yep. them from participating, you morons. Um, yeah, God we. Bl were, we God were bless him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Keep it up. Keep it up. You Trump. know, Tara, I, I do want to say one thing about the hearings yesterday yeah. that I think is is important for people to think about and understand. And Bill Stepien, 
um, who was the guy who replaced Brad Parscale after we got him fired. Uh, yeah. Bill Stepien, on his former video Christie deposition, guy. tried former to make Chris him- Former Chris Christie guy, by the way. Former Chris Christie guy, former Bridgegate guy. Mm -hmm. um, he's not unfamiliar with having to have a criminal defense attorney. No, he's not. Um, he tried to play a very a very cynical double game last night with or, or yesterday on that in that testimony. I obviously recorded it earlier, where he said I was on team normal. I mm -hmm. began to back away when I saw these outrageous ideas about the, the election being stolen. That is in the technical legal definition what we call horseshit. Yeah. Because Bill Stepien is still on retainer to the Save America PAC. Bill Stepien is still representing Republican candidates who are full supporters of Donald Trump's big lie, Yep. who are full MAGA. He is, in fact, running the campaign of the Republican primary against Liz Cheney in Wyoming. Yeah, so, correct. So don't let Bill Stepien uh, fool you with the, uh, with the whole fleece vest affect. I'm just a Rick, but so just to give you guys a heads up, guy. I'm yeah. just a regular dude. No, let me tell you something. We, Rick, we're losing you a little bit. We're losing you a little bit. You're going in and out, and I'm just going to let the audience know what's happening. So there's like a major storm going on yes, right please. now down in south in uh, in down south. I was going to say South Florida, but he lives in Tallahassee area, and so Rick's internet is a little spotty tonight. So if he goes in and out, that's why it's not the Russians this time. Um, so I will have to jump in and rescue him occasionally, yeah. like right now when he's, when he's pixelated, but right, right now, now, um, but to, just to, to put a, a, a pin in your point there, um, yeah, Bill Stepien is full of shit. Okay. He, in his testimony, <laughs> yes. he, he's full of shit. As we say in Jersey, in the legal parlance in Jersey, he's full of fucking shit. Yeah, he's full of fucking and, guys full of shit. <laughs> that's right. And, <laughs> um, uh, and he tried to, uh, for those who don't know him, because most people, unless you're in the political world, like we are, they don't know who the hell Bill Stepien right. is. He comes across as being, oh, uh, you know, a buttons up guy, like your normal Republican operative, normal back pre Trump days. And uh, which he was until he decided to sell his soul to Trump, like a lot of the other ones. And he is an enabler, just That's like right. the rest of them. So there is no team normal. I guess if you're defining normal, it means that maybe he wasn't running around with a tinfoil hat in his head saying that Dominion, you know, Dominion voting systems is getting alien signals from outer space to change voting, you know, ballots. <laughs> Maybe that's what the demarcation line is between sure, like him and Sidney Powell, you know. <laughs> but there is no normal anybody in Trump right. world that that's decided right. to be an enabler. So he can we we're, we're not letting him get away with that BS. Now, if he was one of the, we can say that there were two camps at least of the Certainly. absolute loon crazy, you know, nutsos like Powell and. Uh, Michael Flynn, the overstock guy, drunk Rudy, you know, that that contingent. Right. Um, and then there were the, uh, you know, the buttoned up ones who were enablers, but also recognized that this was not, you no, know, this wasn't going to happen and that Trump lost. So you know, it, that's it the is, it is It is increasingly what I'm calling the fleece vest idea. Yeah. Yes, you know, good. Glenn Youngkin and Dave mm -hmm. McCormick and Bill Stepien, you know, they come in wearing a Patagonia vest and they look right. and sound like they're not completely insane. Right. And and these are people who were not insane in the in the in the earlier part of their lives and careers. No. But what would have the the requirement the moral requirement if you're Bill Stepien to be on team normal is to walk out the door a second they start talking about a conspiracy to steal the election and go to the attorney which to to piggyback off of rick's point i hate to say it because i can't stand the guy but bill barr was actually i think you could say if you wanted to put somebody in team normal it was Barr, because bill barr was the one who said okay this is bullshit, which he said we saw during the deposition yeah. uh in the hearing he's like this is crazy he audibly laughed at some of the quote evidence that the that the Trump wackadoodles were putting forward, he was like, not, "Is he serious with this?" And so, I mean, Bill Barr, if anyone, um, and then he decided, like, after it got too crazy, he said, "I'm out. I'm out." 
Now, you know, he should have said think, something at the time. Right, he course. should have been a lot more forthcoming. And I have really, you know, zero patience for a lot of these people who are trying to come across now as being like, listen, I try to tell him we try to stop him. Did you? Did you did really? You, did you, though? I don't you think know, and, so. And look, I, I will say this. Bill Barr, I think, did enormous uh, uh, and consequential damage to our country in the course 100%. of his service as AG. Yeah. In this case, and look, I, I believe his testimony yes. in this case. Yes. I also have to say, no matter how angry I am at Bill Barr, the fact that he basically called Dinesh D'Souza's 2,000, ro 2000 robot mules. mules or whatever the fuck yeah. that's called uh, a, a, a joke, I, 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 I had strange new respect because anybody that hates Dinesh... <laughs> Yeah, he's the he's another one. He's the an worst. absolute worst liar, l lunatic. And I don't know what happened. Was he always that crazy? I, I, he was always kind of a shit, honestly. Yeah, I guess. He was always kind of... He, and I've talked to people that are, go back to college days with him. He was always kind of a kind of a, a snitchy little shit. Yeah, well, you know, he, he got himself in some trouble, too, a couple years well, ago. Yes, he did. Um, and, uh, yeah. But anyway, so yes, so this this idea of Bill Stepien, who was supposed to testify in person, but his wife went into labor, so he couldn't testify in person at the last minute. All right, we'll give him a pass on that, I guess. But uh, but his video testimony from the past, his deposition, was still very informative because this was this was Trump's campaign manager. So even he was like, "Yeah, this isn't happening. You lost," and he wasn't listening, which I thought was. Um, interesting i'm i'm curious rick are you hearing anything from your maga world folks about how infuriated trump was because you had a couple of people yesterday who were insiders again yeah basically calling him out for either being detached from reality um out of control angry not yep. listening and then if he was listening he went through with pushing the big lie anyway None right. of those are good things. I, I think the, the the story I would recommend that folks take a look at is by Sharish Date and Jennifer Bendry at Huffington Post uh, about Trump world's reaction to Stepien's testimony, where they uh, are shocked and appalled. He was on a strategy call with Trump last week. <laughs> last week. He works for them. He still works for them. He's trying to do the, 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 the classic contemporary Republican DC play on the, in your, in your private life and with your friends and with professionals and with corporate donors, you're like, Oh, I can't stand Trumpism. It's so filthy. I, it, it makes me feel soiled just to contemplate it. Yeah. And in your, and in your mug life, it's like, yeah, oh, burn it down. Right. That's, that's, right. You know? that's exactly right. Except when you're under oath, and um, there's a potential criminal referral right. at, at stake there. Well, then things change a little bit for some of these people. There are other that, others who are completely incorrigible, like Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro and these the idiots. The podcaster Steve Bannon. Yes, the podcaster. Um, but most of these other folks, they have families and mortgages, and they're not trying to spend their all of their money on criminal defense attorneys like Eric Hirschman <laughs> suggested that John Eastman do, which he's had to do because uh, of of him being right in the middle of all of this craziness. But speaking of the of of money, something else that we said here, another I told you so moment here for us, uh, Rick. How many times did we say on this program? That the whole big lie right after the election, between the election and January 6th, was all about raising money. Absolutely. Or the Trump. Dozens of times. Re-election campaign. Dozens or of times. Trump. How many times? We Dozens. were like, this is what this is about. Obviously, this was before January 6th. Um, but we're like, they're raising, because we knew how much money they were raising back then. And, mm -hmm. and it was an astronomical amount. Because the, if he played it that way, that something was being stolen, then his dupe supporters would say, oh, we definitely want to spend, you know, we're going to send money to help you fight this because they thought that this was going, that they were going to somehow overturn the election results and Trump would still be president. $250 million later, we find out from the committee and they didn't even have an election defense fund. What they were using, they were sending up to 25 text messages yep. to fundraising text messages to supporters yep. to get and them. Emails. Yep. And, Bombing and, them. Now I have to say my mom, she like, she signed up for something just so that she could get the, the crazy. So she could sure, see, sure. you know, what was going on. I think she was, it was one of the, the Trump rallies when people were buying tickets or getting tickets. So they just to take them up. So they wouldn't, but wouldn't go anyway. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But then she started getting bombarded with these crazy Trump te text messages for money. And you should read, if anyone has ever gotten these, 
they're like predatory lender intimidating you you know you oh, must it's, act it, now right. or else trump won't like you anymore you won't be you're supposed to be our friend but trump it, is counting on you or there you were know, a lot like, of them were like is it true you've betrayed Trump yes. to go and worship at the altar of Satan's own choice, Joseph <laughs> Robinette <laughs> Beezlebub Biden? And, and the, the language is so lurid and crazy. It speaks to a reality of the Trump fundraising mechanism. Okay, So culty. It's so culty. So culty. But that reality is also that the average age, the, the median age, excuse me, the median age of a Trump donor, median, median, median age of a Trump donor is around 66 years old. Mm -hmm. Half are older. Yeah. So they're getting bombarded with these things. They're hearing that the president that they love is being uh, is being attacked and that, that the election defense fund is the only thing that stands between them and full Antifa gay Sharia marriage. Yep. And so yep. and it worked. they gave Trump and his people over $200 million. He raised 250 apparently between <sighs> election day and, and Joe Biden's inauguration, where they kept bombing them even that day. Yes. On right. inauguration day, they were sending fundraising emails. Help as, us stay in power. Right. As Trump was getting on Air Force One and taking right. off uh, from Andrews Air Force Base, good riddance, buddy. They were still, you know, the people still thought that a couple days later, there was going to be some kind of coup thing happening. Or, or was it not? It was like in March, I think, some QAnon weirdo date that Trump was going right. to be Remember, March 17th was going to be the like day. That. And but I, I, you know, one other thing, Tara, about this that I that I that I want to I want to you know just speak to very directly to to, to our, the critics of the Lincoln Project. A lot of people wondered, like, how did you guys do what you did? You raised a hundred million dollars. We spent, as we put on our stewardship report well over 85% of that money doing what we call voter contact, digital advertising, production, TV advertising, talking to voters in key states. It's a very high average. In fact, it's higher than the, than the industry average for a PAC. The Trump super PAC operation is a billion dollar scam that has directly enriched Donald Trump and his immediate family members. That money also went through Win Red. Win Red is controlled by a board of DC insiders who secretly get a cut of all that revenue. That's correct. So guys like Josh Holmes and Rona McDaniel and many of these other people in Washington who, who are part of the Win Red mechanism have, have skimmed off that money. And it's not coming from billionaires. It's not coming from people who can afford it. It's coming from grandma who cashes her social security check because she's afraid that Antifa is going to come in a caravan and murder her. Yes. Because and, she was told that on Fox News and it by was Tucker an, Carlson. It was an epic, <laughs> epic scam. Mm -hmm. The grift of all grifts, the er finance grift of all time. And it's just an extension of every other sleazy pump and dump fundraising scheme Trump has ever run in his life. It's true. It's just Trump steaks. It's Trump university. It's, it's Trump, Trump vitamins, vodka, vodka hookers, right. God all, knows what else. <laughs> it's all of those things uh, uh, scaled up to the, the presidency. And it's something that we, those of us who never supported Trump, that were sounding the alarm from the beginning, were trying to warn people back in 2015 and 2016 that that's what this entire your thing was about yep. for him. Michael Cohen talked about that. He never wanted to actually be president. Yeah. It was a big marketing ploy. They and were was, shocked on election night. Were, did you to... see their faces? Uh, Melania Trump looked ashen. Like she was ready to, she was going to throw up on stage because she couldn't believe now she was going to actually have to stay with him and be seen with him in public for four more years. Like to Trump and all the rest of them, they were horrified. A and, person, a person involved in the Trump campaign had called me on election day 2016. He's like, oh my God, you got you wait till I tell you the fucking crazy stories that happen here. This is insane. We got to get a steak. And I got I need three hours to just download to you. Cause oh my fucking God, I can't, <laughs> I'm so glad this is over. And then like <laughs> two hours later, I'm I'm like, well, I guess I'm not getting that steak. Right. Uh, there's gonna be a whole lot more drinking going on because yes. we can't believe this for four more years. 
Um, but back to the hearings. And and also, yeah. um, I, I meant to say this at the top of the show, that if you guys have questions for us or any comments, like shoot them into Twitter or the chat on, on yep, yep, YouTube yep. and we'll grab them because we really want to start uh, incorporating the audience back again. We're going to make that a regular thing here. Yeah, because yeah, we know you guys have a lot of questions and, and things to say about this because we're all in this together. So um, send that over to our social and we'll grab a couple, hopefully, before the end of the show tonight. Um, but we will be doing that going forward with all the shows. But back to the hearings. I mean, this this idea of the grift. You know, there's something I have to tell you. It's pretty funny. So we all know that Trump, the Trump International Hotel in D.C. was just one big grift as well. I mean, Trump, uh, Trump tried to put the kibosh on moving the FBI headquarters, which had been in the works for years. Prior administrations, they've been trying right. to move the FBI headquarters, which is in downtown D.C. The worst um, building in downtown D.C. It's by so the way. ugly. It it's really so terrible. is. It's terrible. But it's prime real estate and. Trump's where Trump had his hotel at the old post office pavilion is also prime real estate. It's only like two blocks from the White House. Um, and so, of course, that was like party central during the Trump campaign, uh, during the Trump years. They had all kinds of events there and he was enriching himself with with people holding their foreign their... foreign foreign dignitaries would come there and they would rent floors yeah. of the hotel for their yeah. for their entourages. Yes. And they'd stay. They'd have a one day state visit. Or, or one day visit to the White House, but they'd stay for a week or ten right. days. Right. And it was it was an overt, it was an overt bribe. Yeah. You know, lobbyists and fundraising events would be held there constantly. Constantly. And it was an overt bribe. And and the downstairs bar, BLT Prime, became this sort of like Star Wars cantina of various <laughs> MAGA of reprobates yes. and and weirdos. Yes. Well, guess what, Rick? That's all gone. It's all gone. <sighs> Because Trump, they lost money on that hotel, actually. It didn't make them that much money. They Once Trump was out of office, it they, they all disappeared. No one wanted to stay there. So they ended up having to sell it. And the owners of the irony of this, so the owners of the Wal Waldorf Astoria, yes. which is Chinese-backed now, by the yes. way, um, they bought it. Yep. And my my husband was it telling me it is a gorgeous property. It is. It's a beautiful location. I've never I never stepped foot in it because I refused no, to step I didn't foot either. on any Trump property, even in New York. I'm like, I'm not a friend of mine. Last time I was in New York with a view, they're like, yeah, let's grab uh, you know lunch or dinner over at I forget the the French restaurant in the Trump Hotel over there by Central Park South. And I was like, yeah, not doing that. Sorry, it's in the yeah, Trump no. property. No. But anyway, my husband was telling me a couple of days ago because he passes by there. He said, guess what? I saw them taking the Trump sign down. It's gone. He goes, it's Waldorf Astoria now. And Jose Andres is coming back with a uh, with a, with an operation there because that's replacing BLT Prime. Because if people remember. Jose Andres mm -hmm. was supposed to have a, a a restaurant in the Trump Hotel back then when it was before That's the right. whole Trump debacle. And then after Trump acted like an ass and Jose Andres was like, I'm not doing business with you. There was a whole lawsuit and the whole thing. But anyway, the point is, it's gone. Jose yes. Andres is back and there's new owners. And my husband and I said, well, now we can actually go and enjoy it and have a drink there. So it's out of here. Well, no and, more, and, no and more. I have to say this, this is a, uh, Jose Andres is, is the polar opposite of Donald Trump. <laughs> he is civic minded. He is good hearted. He is community oriented, and 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 if you wanted to exercise the ghosts of the of the bad years of that on that property, yes, that's a great start. It's a Absolutely. great, great, great start. You know who else we won't be seeing there anymore? Kimberly Guilfoyle. Uh, it came out also during the hearings that Kimberly Guilfoyle was paid sixty thousand dollars for a two and a half minute introduction. Uh, during the January 6th rally on the ellipse. Sixty thousand dollars. Tell me more. Tell me more about these grifters. Right. Are Get you freaking kidding me? Now, Zoe Lofgren may implied that this came from the money that went to the, the fake uh, election um legal fu defense fund, right. which didn't right, exist, right. but then it turned into the Save America PAC. Uh she she implied that, but tonight Wolf Blitzer asked her for some clarification. It seems as though that money actually came from Turning Point USA that right. paid her that money. Mm -hmm. However, we still don't know how much money potentially Turning Point USA got from the Save America Fund or whomever, because the Turning Point, Charlie Cook and all those those folks, they're all in cahoots together. So, But regardless of whether it came from, from the Save America fraud grift thing from Trump or not, the point is that these people were all there getting paid $60,000. I don't even, I, I don't think like JLo gets that. 
or, you know, I don't think, uh, just name the, the, the top yeah, artists look, these, in the world. The, these, people, these people don't take a dump without a bribe, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And they will brand anything. They will do anything they can. And, and I have to say, Kimberly Guilfoyle for $60,000 for two minutes, I, I don't want to do that math. It's just, it's horrifying. Right. Um, it was because, only like $400 a second or something Right. Like that. It, it, it's just like. It, what? It, in, in America, where income inequality rears its ugly head. It's <laughs> no not only that, but it's talent inequality. Good God. No kidding. And they, and these are supposed to be people we're thinking, we're supposed to, you know, believe we're in it. I don't know if you've noticed patriots. this, but her, uh, her, 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 her man, Donald Trump Jr., is now hawking stakes in a throwback to his dad's. Um, Stop. His dad's origin story of, of hawking steaks. Uh, well, you know what else? There, between that and uh, Rudy Giuliani and his, you know, his begging oh, people to, to send his cat, you know, get cameo to rent him out for messages on the cameo app. To now, um, we're hearing that the um, uh, uh, home title lock. Have you ever seen those? The home title lock. Commercial? Yes, I have. With so with, apparently. With Newt Apparently, Gingrich. yeah, Newt Gingrich and Bill O'Reilly and a bunch of these other conservative stars that have been hawking this. Yeah, there's an investigation into that. Whether that's you know on the up and up, what a what, what a shock. I, 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 Newt Gingrich being involved in some sort of shenanigans. <laughs> right, I am I, stunned by this what news. A, what a shock. Um, I wanted to show a clip from uh from LP. We had a couple rapid responses uh, videos that we put out. And uh, this one detached from reality because uh, we were uh, we were talking about Barr earlier, and I just think this is a good one. So check out uh, one of our rapid response videos from yesterday's hearing. There was never there was never an indication of interest in what the actual facts were. And I remember telling him that. I didn't believe the Dominion allegations. And I said something to the effect of, sir, we've done dozens of investigations, hundreds of interviews. The major allegations are not supported by the evidence developed. I said to him, are you out of your effing mind? I told him um, that the group that went over there um, outlined, you know, my belief in, 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 in chances for success at this point. Flat out that much of the information he's getting is false and or just not supported by the evidence. And I was somewhat demoralized because I thought, boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has lost contact with, uh, with uh, he, he's become detached from reality. Detached from, from reality. reality. Well, you know who's not detached from reality? Uh, us and the people who are paying attention. And the reality here is that there are over 100 people who are MAGA, um, MAGA supporters who believe big in the lie big lie. Endorsers. Right, big lie endorsers who have won Republican primaries thus far. Yep. 100 thus far. These are people that if they win in the general election, will have power to overturn election results That's or right. mess with election results or create absolute chaos in, in elections. So, and, and it just it's one more reminder, the future of the GOP is not Glenn Young in the, the affable technocrat in the sweater right. vest. It's right. not David McCormick, the guy from Wall Street who's going to run. It's not, it's not whatever imaginary moderate Republican Kevin McCarthy pitches his corporate donors for it's these people. They're That's the future. correct. They are They're the, the future. future. And uh, Lincoln Project has put out an excellent ad, and I believe it is the first general election attack ad against Doug Mastriano, who's yes, running for governor of Pennsylvania. And this is critically important because Pennsylvania's governor gets to appoint the secretary of state. The secretary of state administers elections yep. in Pennsylvania. So this is the guy that Republicans have chosen to run for governor. And LP wants to remind you who he is. Take a look. Pennsylvania's story is the story of America. Our nation was born in Philadelphia and saved on the fields of Gettysburg. But today, a man who has been part of attacks on America from within wants to be our governor. 
Doug Mastriano could have stood with those bravely defending the Capitol that day. Instead, he stood with the insurrectionist mob that assaulted police officers, with those who chanted to hang the vice president as they smashed windows and waved the Confederate battle flag. Mastriano was investigated by the FBI after lying about where he stood that day and who he stood with. The truth was Doug Mastriano is the very enemy he once swore an oath to stand against. How could this man be our governor? Pennsylvania's story is the story of American patriots. Doug Mastriano's is the story of a traitor. These it's the, the subtlety. People. It's the subtlety. I think people really embrace about this. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, these are the people that are, occupy the Republican Party today. Yeah, the, that them, those folks, and right. we can. We have to do everything we can to stop them. We have and, Republican leadership right now. CNN yeah. just put a story out as well about how Republicans are jockeying to be the main defenders of Donald Trump over January sixth. Right. They are jockeying for position because they know that the bona fides now in the Republican Party is actually being on the side of the seditionists and the insurrectionists right. and the fa- the neo-fascists who don't believe that democracy is, should be preserved, that they want to install their dear leader. And these are the people that they're, they, they want to defend this because that's what it is. It's not anything else that we, normal politics. It's not tax cuts. It's not, you know, immigration reform. It's not. No, it's this. Right. And that's what they're trying to do. And folks, this, what are we this doing is in the America? first. This is the first general election ad of the cycle. Yeah. Um, and we would encourage you. We we were putting money behind this in Pennsylvania. Um, we'd like to invite you to join us in this fight. You can go to LincolnProject.us/donate. Um, we're specifically looking right now to do a big push to raise a, an amount of money in Pennsylvania from both. Uh, low dollar donors and medium dollar donors and high dollar donors to send a very clear message that the terms of the fight of people who don't believe the election was valid are really the most important battleground we're going to face in the 2022 election because it decides everything for 2024. If Doug Mastriano is governor of Pennsylvania and Donald Trump loses that state by two to one, Doug Mastriano will say, nope, he won. I declare it, it's over. This is the thin edge of the wedge of authoritarianism. Yep. We're going to push back. We hope you'll join us and support this effort at lincolnproject.us slash donate. Thanks. And now we're going to take your questions. Yes, <laughs> question time. What's the first question? What have we got? Okay, Rick and Tara, love your show. Do you believe the January 6th committee will change the minds of any of the MAGA cult? In particular, whom? Nope. No, that's the nature of a cult, unfortunately. Yeah, it, that's not the audience. I mean, the, the, the audience for this is the same audience the Lincoln Project addresses in our advertising and our communications and our social platforms and our, and our podcasts and the, this show and the outreach. We're trying to reach people who are particularly, to make them vote a different way, disaffected Republicans, 7 to 11% of the population. They are tend to be a little more wealthy. They tend to be a little more female, a little more educated. They are in America's suburbs surrounding major cities, and there are millions of them. We helped move them in 2020 in states like Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Georgia, Michigan and, Arizona. and Georgia and Arizona. And those are the people who are persuadable. The right. cult believes that this, is, that this is what they're told it is on Fox, a witch hunt, a show trial. Oh, they're so mean to poor Mr. Trump. Um, yep. so it is, I don't think it's going to change the MAGA cult's mind. It can, however, have a salutary effect on the people that work in that cult where they're, they're at least some of them are going to be held to account. And you're going to realize if you're taking the drug Lord's money and doing the drug Lord's yeah. bidding, yeah. you're not on team normal. Yeah, that's right. I mean, maybe the couple people will wake up and realize they've been duped and taken for a ride. And I do say, think I do think the I financial think, shenanigans here yes. and the scam yep. aspect of this Might that may shake up. a few people in the Republican <clears throat> world. Um, because look, there are folks out there who who gave thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to Donald Trump 
who were on de- disability and social security. Yeah. yeah. And those people are not out there living a very high life. No, no. Most and they of the, got, I mean, they most got, of the, it's small dollar donors. It's they not got a, frightened and intimidated yeah. into giving that money to him. And, 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 but here's the thing, Rick, Trump, they, Trump and, and, and his minions, they knew this, they knew who to play. They had, they knew who their marks were. And let me tell you something. I tweeted this yesterday and I haven't really told this story much in public for a couple of reasons, but I'm, I'm over it now. And so I'm telling the story in public now because I've known her for over 20 years, 25 years since I was in college. Mm-hmm. We used to be very good friends. And during the 2016 campaign, as a matter of fact, we lived about a mile and a half away from each other in New Jersey. And when we would do hits on CNN together, sometimes she'd catch a ride or say, hey, you want to, you know, can I catch a ride with you? I'm sure. I literally would drive past her house to get home right. all the time. Um, and one Sunday, my husband and I were at her house with her, her mother, her aunt. George was there for a little bit. Her kids were there. And we were, and a couple of her friends, and we were drinking wine and talking. And this was in the spring of 2016. Mm-hmm. And she called Claudia, who is now, you know, Instagram right. famous, but Claudia was still a little kid back then. And, and said, hey, Claudia, tell that story about the time that we were at that event with Donald Trump in, in 2015 before, when he was rec- trying to – he'd been trying to recruit Kellyanne to come work for him. Sure. Because remember, they lived in his building, so they knew him mm-hmm. from years before. And uh, she was like, no, 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 no. She went to work for Ted Cruz. And at the sure. time, she was still working for Ted Cruz. We were in her house drinking wine, and Claudia comes in. She says, tell that story about what, when we were at that event. And we and Mr. Trump uh, flew flew us back on his private plane and what he said to you in the car. So Claudia said when they were in the truck uh, on their way to the airport, leaving this event, there were a bunch of Trump supporters there. And Trump turned to her and said, look at those chumps. Look at those fools out there cheering for me. What a bunch of chumps. Back then to a 10 year old kid. OK, that was in 2016. And I kept that, you know, quiet because I, I didn't want to betray certain confidences. Sure. But that's way out the window now after. Everything yeah, I that's think we're past on, that. Way past that. And, you know, and I said to myself, they knew this. She knew it at the time. She knew how Trump felt. He has always felt like that about his supporters. He can't stand these people. He sees them all as a bunch of idiot Mark Chumps, fools sure. that support him. And, and he's laughing all the way to that's the right. bank. You know, this was, and folks, Kara, you cut out for a little bit there, but oh, look, she Ke- was talking about Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne so, Conway. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, but, but that sort of cynicism um, is something that, that a lot of, it's a great irony that I find constantly that the people that, that always had these high, fl- high flying principles about doing the right thing and working for the right kind of candidate and everything else, you know, end up just comfortably morally compromising with with trump so yeah i think that's i think that's a you know that's a big that's a big part of bill stepien and all these other people yes. where they got into the proximity of power and they weren't going to leave they still don't want to leave right and they also they got paid very handsomely for it as we have seen right. and they continue to okay we i think we have one more uh question <laughs> normal the streets maga and the sheets that was oh. a good chiron <laughs> nice sam Hot tip Mr. Sam. <laughs> nice, Sam. I'm glad you caught it, Rick. Uh, after the hearings are over, what's the next step? What is the worst that can happen to Trump? Well, I like to think that the worst that can happen to Trump is an eternity in the lake of fire. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Which may still happen. We don't have control over that. That's between right, that, That's God. above my pay grade. <laughs> um, no, criminal look, referral? I, I think C- criminal DOJ. referral, DOJ criminal referral is about, as, as about the, to the point it's going to get. Um, and I think DOJ bringing a case against him is the worst case scenario, but I have to be really re- realistic with everybody. Lyndon LaRouche ran for president from jail three times. <laughs> right. Trump could be in jail, run for president, and win. Oh. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this. It would make his base so crazy. Yeah, they would they would believe that this was the 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 system uh, trying to put them down one last time, and. <sighs> Oh it's a dark scenario. It's a dark world to, to think about that one, but it's not an impossible one. So, well, we we don't want to leave on on a dark note, Rick. Uh, let's get a comment. I think we had a, co- a comment. Okay. <laughs> Bannon, Bannon looks like, looks a, like toad. a toad has been run over a hundred times. <laughs> Bannon looks like he's made of pure gristle. That's that's the that's what you call him. Gristle. Oh my gris. god. 
Yeah. Anytime we can dump on on Steve Bannon is 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 a fun time because he Bannon, is... Bannon looks like herpes filled up a suit from Goodwill. Oh, God. All right. All right. There you have it. There you Plants have it. Plants wither so at Bannon's touch. Oh, yeah. He's um something else. That guy. All right. I think that's enough for today. Is it um, though? <laughs> I, I know it's right, not. Right, we could really right. keep going on and on, but I, I don't. Well, want, folks, I don't you want got those a big images. day tomorrow. I don't want those images. Well, Thursday. It's actually Thursday, Thursday excuse now. Me, Thursday. They, excuse they me. They postponed right. they, tomorrow's they hearing. It. Right. They postponed tomorrow's hearing, but Thursday. Uh, we will be running the hearings live as we have been doing throughout. So you can always watch them here yep. and we will be going live right after the hearings with our hot takes and commentary. So make sure no matter what time they end, we'll be on about 15 minutes after that. Yep. And uh, we'll be running again at seven, but we will be live after the hearings on Thursday. And of course, tomorrow is we're speaking, I believe yep. a, a regularly scheduled programming. Right. The ladies that we're speaking will be on tomorrow at seven. Um, one other thing, thing that, one other thing, Tara, just real quick. Yeah. Um, I just want to mention, folks, um, providing these live streams to, um, to, to folks of the hearings, uh, I have gotten so many positive comments about it, so much good feedback about it. Thank you so much. We're glad you trust us to, to give you the, the, a place to watch the news as it's breaking and happening. Uh, and a community, I've, I was, I've jumped in and out of the YouTube stream a few times on that. Uh, but we're just really honored that, you're, that you, 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 you tuned in on the, on the live streams. We'll continue that. And uh, let us know if you want us to cover more live events because we've got uh, we've got some some ambition to do that and yep. uh, and people seem to like it so thank yep. you for that yes we we do read your comments we so do send them send I them I read in. the comments God save yes. me <laughs> good and bad right right we both do sometimes you know it's uh but that's what we do we can't help it we want to hear from you because I read you know. a comment today that said on the dark side of Reddit they call you Rick Robespierre I'm like no no they what don't. no they just don't. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's where it's not even a line. It's not even like a line. (laughs) No, like what? What? What is that? No, no. Anyway, 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 folks, thank you for joining us. We will see you again on Thursday, and uh, yeah, do we have paying attention? LWRP. Oh yes, that's right. We have the last week in the Republican Party. See, we've been all caught caught up in the January sixth stuff. I completely all the chit chat. We do all the chit chat. We do have a last week in the Republican Party. How dare we forget that? So we will leave you with We'll roll out some, on that, folks. We'll roll out on that, yes. We'll leave you with some some hilarity for the week. Last week in the Republican Party, here it is, and we'll see you guys Thursday. That's a good one. Trump won the presidency. I would rather give Nancy Pelosi a sponge bath than endure like one dinner <laughs> without a shift. Yes, we don't believe in abortion. No, we don't believe in homosexuality. The most, would you trim her toenails? I would trim her toenails with my teeth. No, we don't accept Biden as our president. We stand on the word of the Lord. <laughs> By gas, okay. Into the formula. <laughs> Here we go Every again. Spin doctor six. back to the gas prices, no, which has nothing to do with this. There is a caravan of ten thousand migrants that are coming. We have fifteen thousand people headed this way right now. It's all theater. It's a circus. It's a political witch hunt. January sixth circus. This is a communist committee. A baby formula shortage. So they're going to have baby formula on the shelf. Gas prices have doubled. People are worried about gas prices. Super high gas prices. The gas prices. Gas Gas prices? Gas prices. Price of gas. In my state, the price of gas is so high that it would be cheaper to buy cocaine and just (laughs) run everywhere. It wouldn't exactly be the worst thing in the world if parts of this country were subjected to nuclear hellfire. I pray for our president. Psalm 1098, may his days be few and another take his office. Their due process rights are being so fragrantly and horrifically violated. Being gay is gay. It's the most disgusting, despicable, stupid... Bleh. This this, this earth warming and, and, and carbon is, is actually healthy for us. Don't let them get away with this crap because they've been getting away with it for too long. Call it out. Don't give them what they're looking for.